What is up, you guys? It's Proton Mew over here. Long time no see. Protons, yes, we're going to be making homemade beef stock cubes. And I'm so thrilled to share this recipe with you because I love using good ingredients. Ingredients that are good for my beautiful self and your beautiful self also deserves really good food with really good ingredients. Because I feel like a lot of times we buy food <laughs> and we're like, oh my gosh, like what is, what is that long name? I have no idea what it is when we're curious enough to actually read the food label. So honestly, Modernization brings about, you know, efficiency and preservatives, etc. But a lot of times they are not the best for you. So I invite you to be curious and actually research what's in your food. So good news, we are going to be making homemade beef stock cubes and you actually will know and be able to identify everything that's in the picture. I won't give you any long, you know, word that you're gonna be like, what is that? No, don't worry about it. But anyways, as always, everything that you guys will need will be down below. If you're new to Proton Mila, welcome to Proton Mila. Feel free to subscribe and also pressing at the bell at the top so you can be up to date with everything. And you know what, guys? Let's get started. This is actually, believe it or not, pretty easy to make. It's, it's really awesome. It's almost magical, especially when you add a little bit of salt. All right, guys, are you ready? One, two, three. As always, I love giving you a visual representation of what you will need. The specifics are down below. Let's get started with a pan, some oil, and we are going to start with chopped onions. We are going to be cooking our onions together with our protein. I have chosen beef. You can choose whatever protein you would like. You can choose pork. You can choose chicken as well. But for this one, I have chosen to use beef because it gives it such a good flavor. And this is going to be cooking for a total of 15 minutes on medium heat. After that is all done, we can actually add all of our chopped up vegetables right away. I, I love this part because I get to admire the beauty of the colors of all the vegetables that we are adding. Take advantage of the time now because this is the most color that you are going to get. After this, it's just going to become one very simple color, but it's okay. I love the ingredients we are using. This is a very fun recipe and I recommend for you to definitely try it because you don't actually have to add everything that I am adding. After you have added your vegetables, we can actually start adding the salt. This is very freestyle. This is a very free recipe because you can decide not to add it, but I have chosen to add it because I want to have this as ready as possible when I'm going to be making something. For example, I ended up using this for black beans in some soup that I made this week, but it's definitely up to you. But after you have added the salt, we are going to check it out and look at the magic and the science that is currently happening. And if anyone is wondering, no, I actually did not add any water. The salt is doing all the work. It's pulling all the fluids from the vegetables and that's why you see the water. This is so amazing. It's super entertaining. But anyways, let's get back to what you are currently seeing right now. We are going to continue cooking this and now we can start adding our spices. I have chosen to use cumin, turmeric, and also oregano. This is another part of the recipe that you don't actually have to use all the ingredients that I am using. I've chosen to use these condiments because they are very commonly used in my kitchen. So it's up to you if you would like to use them or not. So after an hour has passed, I'm going to strain this and we're actually going to be cooking it again. We're going to be making a reduction of the liquid that was made from the water that was pulled from the vegetables together with the condiments. So while this is heating up, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to start blending all the vegetables that we strained, as you guys can see here, so that we can actually start making the paste. And as you guys can tell, this has become one golden color. This is going to be cooking as long as possible. It took me about 20 to 25 minutes for it to dry up to turn into a paste, which is what you get here. Now we can officially get started with making our cubes. Once you get yourself the paste already, you're going to find a baking pan and we're going to add a layer of plastic wrap together with some parchment paper to prevent the paste from sticking onto the pan. After that, we can start adding our paste and whatever method is easier for you guys, go for it. This is a way that I decided to add the paste onto my baking pan and it made it so much easier. Heads up, Protons, I am putting enough paste so that my cubes become about half an inch thick. It all depends as to how thick you would like your cubes, but I prefer them to for them to be not too big and not too small. So 
I'm adding just enough for them to be half an inch thick. After you have done this, you're going to put a layer of plastic wrap on the top and you're going to put this in the refrigerator for an entire night. If you don't want to do this whatsoever, it's okay. You can find yourself a jar as I did here and simply store it in the fridge. Curtains, it's a brand new day. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be transferring our paste, this huge block into a cutting board so we can finally start cutting up our cubes. The size of your cubes is up to you. I love giving you guys recipes, as you guys already know, that you guys can freestyle along the way. So obviously the size of your cubes is up to you. So another tip that I want to share with you is that as you are cutting, make sure that you are adding a little bit of space in between each cube because it will allow for them to obviously freeze better so after you have done that i'm going to transfer this back into the baking pan that i originally used for about two hours or so after the freezing time has passed you can finally find yourself a container in between i chose to put a layer of plastic wrap so that my cubes would not stick together these can last about three to four months but what i really love about this recipe is that you know where your ingredients are coming from you are not wasting all your vegetables or letting them go to waste and you're taking advantage of them but anyways thank you so much for sticking around and i will see you guys on the next video all right guys bye bye